Good evening. Welcome to Behind the Headlines. I'm joined as always by my co-host Simon Barrett. Uh, we're this evening going to be talking about a crucial subject. Is the West complicit in China's organ harvesting scandal? And this is the 20th of October 2021. Welcome to the program. Simon, how are you this evening? Yeah, not bad, not bad. And y y yourself? Yeah, uh, do doing well. was thankful that I caught an early train uh, because there were mass delays at Waterloo. Uh, loads of people, but got here all okay. Um, one of the things that re really struck me over the weekend though, was this story. I, when we were talking about what we would be doing uh, this evening, I had come across this story and I thought, well, th this is incredibly grim. In China, at the moment, there are between 60 and 100,000 people a year who are being essentially murdered with their organs harvested in many cases while they're alive. And um, some of the news articles I was reading was comparing it to this recent Netflix dystopian hit program Squid Games, which um, apparently features grotesque violence and people compete for large cash prizes. And there's a side story wherein uh, organs are harvested and uh, a lot of um, c cash is gained from that. And these articles were saying this is a real life Squid Game. This is a real life dystopian horror and I have to say looking at some of the reports reading some of the comments even um, in I believe it was the mirror there was a first-hand account of a doctor who had participated in some of this organ harvesting giving his account I have to agree I mean what makes this really absolutely horrific it is actually it's beyond a kind of imagination to think that any country would uh, want to actually murder uh, dissidents um, political prisoners, um, the Uyghurs, including Christians as well, and actually harvest their organs on demand. Um, and I mean, this is, this is something that's barbaric. It even feels like it, it belongs in the Middle Ages, not in mm. the 21st century. Uh, and what concerns me the most is, is the silence uh, from the West. Uh, where are the international condemnations from against the Chinese regime from actually doing this. Uh, and we're seeing now, in terms of human rights abuses, that the worst human rights abuses occurring in China in the 21st century. Mm. And they are c competing to be the world's most dominant power in the world. Now that should be a wake up call to us all, knowing the nature of this regime, knowing they're also threatening Taiwan mm. with, uh, with invasion. They've just launched only, uh, only a week or so ago uh, a hypersonic uh, nuclear missile that uh, can travel half the globe. Oh, thankfully, it didn't have a nuclear warhead on it, but just shows you their intent. We're also seeing they're wanting to export their complete mass surveillance system to the rest, uh, to the rest of the world and to the West and control the West. Uh, they got their Belt and Road program, which is uh, which is, acts as a Trojan horse to provide massive infrastructure projects in order to take over uh, the Central Asia into the Middle East and into Europe as a f means of uh, for potential future Chinese invasion of Asia, the Middle East and uh, Europe. Uh, we also see with them as well um, their horrendous um, clamping down on the uh, the freedom fighters, uh, well, the, the protesters in Hong Kong, mm. um, they were then also responsible for the leak 
whether it was deliberate or whether it was an accident. We know that they de helped develop COVID-19 and this spread around the world. And no country uh, apart from Australia suggested the urgent need to actually investigate China. And then when you look what's happening in China itself, it is absolutely horrific mm. to actually uh, harvest more than over 100,000 uh, dissidents, uh, you know, political prisoners, organs to meet demands, even even carrying out kind of, um, uh, liver transplants yeah. on people with COVID-19. I mean, it's just absolutely barbaric. And yet we just see nothing but silence for, from the Western world. Biden is complicit with the uh, Chinese regime. We are very quiet. So is the EU. So, I mean, um, we could be on the edge of uh, World War Three with, with the Chinese. And yet, you know, we remain silent. Well, uh, OK, so the first I heard of this exact scandal of and uh, this organ harvesting of people whilst alive would have been from various individuals linked to Falun Gong who are in, um, in London. They've escaped, they're asylum seekers, refugees, and they used to stand outside various places, in, including the Houses of Parliament, with very graphic posters of people who um, were imprisoned or were being tortured or had been tortured um, by the Chinese Communist Party. And I, I remember reading little bits and pieces of it, but it, it just feels as though for years no one paid attention. No one talked about Falun Gong. It was not really on uh, in the mainstream media at all. I didn't see in any other media. Uh, you can think about the Uyghurs at the moment, and the Uyghurs are being discussed a little bit more, uh, marginally more, but nothing is being done. There's uh, no And action. three million of them are in concentration camps. Yeah. I think there's a population of 10 million, and three million of them are in concentration camps. I routinely say, I'm, I'm honestly fed up with hearing when it comes to Holocaust and Memorial and Remembrance Month, never again, and people talk about genocide in this place and that place and, and the other saying, never again, we won't allow it to happen. It happens every day. It's happening right there. It's happening in China. It's happening not only with the Uyghurs. Um, it, it, we, we now look at the Uyghurs because most of Falun Gong was decimated. It's happening with Christians. It's happening with others who are dissidents um, against the CCP. And um, you know, there's there's minimal minimal discussion of it uh, this year. UN um, released a statement expressing their alarm by organ harvesting allegations. These allegations have been made since the 90s, Simon. I didn't know. Since, that. See, I, I came across uh, a, a really disturbing account of a doctor who was involved in um, do, doing some organ harvesting back in the mid 90s of uh, people linked with Falun Gong. So th there have been people trying to get the word out since the 90s. I remember it was it had to be the early 2000s, like around 2005, when I first came across um, some of these claims. It's now ramping up a bit, but the UN is acting like this is. This is all news to them. In June, 14th of June, 2021, one of their human rights experts um, said they were extremely alarmed by reports of alleged organ harvesting targeting minorities, including Falun Gong practitioners, Uyghurs, Tibetans, Muslims, and Christians in detention in China. And the experts said they had received credible information that detainees from ethnic, linguistic, or religious minorities may be forcibly subjected to blood tests and organ examinations such as ultrasound and x-rays without their informed consent, while other prisoners are not required to undergo such examinations. The results of the examinations are reportedly registered in a database of living organ sources that facilitates organ allocation. And what seems to have spawned this latest story, in addition to the comparisons with the dystopian horror squid games, um, is that um, China proudly reported that uh, an individual expected to die within days had been able to uh, be treated with a double lung transplant, perfectly paired lungs. That doesn't happen. You don't get perfectly paired matching lungs for someone days away from dying w within that time period. It can take years just to find one healthy yeah. lung. 
So, I mean, it's good that the UN has, has come out and, mm. and uh, raised this as an issue, but it seems very much that the uh, World Health Organization is also complicit in this silence. So what has the World Health Organization said on this? Because this is, this is absolutely grotesque. Yeah, um, so w we have, uh, remember everyone, this is a live and interactive program, so um, please do send in your thoughts, your ideas. And this is from Brian, good evening, guys, let's not forget that it's not just China that is organ harvesting, but also the West who harvest the organs of vulnerable children still in their mother's wombs um, that have no choice but to be uh, bought and sold for pharmacy testing on vaccines and other products. This is perhaps why the West are keeping quiet on China. Shalom from Brian. Um, interesting thought there, Brian, and actually I'm quite sympathetic to that. I think there's a, a real case to be made for um, us really not having much ground to um, to talk in, in the West about China because of um, the heinous evils that we perpetrate and um, pr propagate. But if you, if you do consider um, is what Simon was talking about as well, the economic impact, um, I think the West is probably not saying these things, maybe because organ harvesting, it c cuts both ways, and we have um, people who practice it in a different format here. I think the main issue is economic. There's so much we have invested in it. Um, consider even, Simon, the criticism from some well-known footballers of China's treatment of the Uyghurs. Uh, they simply made a statement. Mesut Ozil, yeah. Mesut Ozil um, a former Arsenal striker, um, ma made um, some comments on the persecution of Uyghurs. And he was asked, uh, initially Arsenal was fine to support that, and then he was asked to remove his post by Arsenal. Why? Because shirt sales are highest in China. And it was going to be hitting them in the pocket. They go on a, a regular tour of China pre-season. Uh, there's, there's so much money that is coming out of China that they thought, you know what, it's, it's not worth backing this cause. We can back any other cause. We can back causes um, that, that abound, but we won't back that cause that criticizes China. It could hurt us too much in the pocket. Well, that's why you have to put morality before profits, and uh, that's where you get the blessing. You don't get the blessing if you're complicit. Um, also, um, doesn't this harvesting of, of organs remind you of the film The Island, um, in, in which they're in this island and they're, these, they're clones of individuals who will potentially will need a an organ transplant later in life. And so therefore they end up um, being on this island. They, they, uh, they have a, a, a copy made of themselves um, through DNA uh, research and engineering. Um, and they're cloned and they are those people are told in Ireland that there's a, there's a nuclear holocaust that's gone around them. And while they're in this bubble, they are protected. But uh, every so often someone says, get a ticket to actually leave the island. But what they then find out through the film is that they end up being operated on mm. and until, until a couple of them escape and expose it all. So that kind of raises the whole question of, of engineering, uh, of DNA engineering, of cloning. But of course, what's happening with that film, that's fictional. But this is real life, yeah. very much like the, the Squid Games you, you were talking about earlier, which is a Netflix hit, um, is that this is actually happening. And this is happening now. Um, and uh, uh, the outrage, I mean, the world should be absolutely appalled at what's happening uh, in China and what the Chinese are doing. Um, I, I was just finding. Anyway, so um, I uh, earlier today interviewed um, Gary Lane. But before we go to the interview I did with Gary Lane, uh, let's have a look at uh, this excellent um, news report that Gary Lane put together on the harvesting of human organs in China. There's disturbing news just out from London. An independent international tribunal concludes that China is killing prisoners in order to harvest their organs. Organ transplant tourism to China is big business and big dollars are involved. The tribunal found that some of the victims of the forced organ harvesting are detainees from the Falun Gong movement. Former Falun Gong and Uyghur Muslim inmates report they were subjected to ongoing medical checkups and blood testing. China says it stopped harvesting the organs of executed prisoners about five years ago, 
but the China Tribunal suggests it is still happening. Here to fill us in with more is Mr. Gary Bauer. Gary is a member of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. Gary, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you again. Well, it's my pleasure to be with you, but it's sad that we, uh, in this day and age, we're talking about something uh, so horrible and so evil as this. Yes, yeah, so fill us in on more of the tribunal's findings and share your thoughts, please. Well, th this is a very credible group. Uh, the chairman of it, Sir Jeffrey Nice, has uh, devoted years of work on human rights issues. Uh, the other members of the tribunal were people that were steeped in Chinese history, Chinese culture. Uh, so this, they, they interviewed dozens and dozens of witnesses. So it's a very credible report. And what it shows, as you summarize, is that China, in spite of previous denials, has literally been killing uh, prisoners of conscience in many cases, Chinese who are in jail because of, of uh, the way they're seeking God or they worship God, and the Chinese government is threatened by that. And they're killing these prisoners and harvesting their internal organs for profit. No doubt the money goes to the Chinese Communist Party or perhaps to the People's Liberation Army. This is just one more example of what is the egregious violations of human rights and religious liberty in China uh, that the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom has been reporting on and indicting China about uh, all the way back to 2007. And again, this year, uh, we emphasize these Chinese abuses in our own report. Gary, the tribunal mentioned the Falun Gong. Did it find evidence of other minority groups, say Christians or Tibetans or other, other groups, Uyghur Muslims? You, you know, the, the evidence seems to point mostly to the Falun Gong. But look, the, China is an equal opportunity human rights abuser. So they use different tactics, different things outside the bounds of civilization, depending on what religious group or uh, other type of group that we're talking about. So as we know, uh, I think it's becoming more and more well known, uh, Chinese Uyghurs, Chinese Muslims are being held in many cases in detention camps. Uh, Christian churches are being shut down. Uh, facial recognition technology has been put into some churches so that the government can keep track of who it is that attends these churches. And now we're getting this report about what appears to be a singling out mostly of the Falun Gong. All of these practices are beyond the pale. They deserve international condemnation. And it ought to raise serious questions, in my view, my personal view, of any business that is doing business, making a profit in China, whether they're European businesses, businesses here in the United States, they ought to seriously ask themselves if they want to be doing business in a country that is engaged in this type of unbelievable violations of basic human rights and uh, human dignity. And of course, as it always does, the Chinese government maintains it's abiding by international standards. This is just political propaganda being used against them. But I understand this tribunal looked into this for over a year. It says there's plenty of evidence. Where did all the evidence come from, Gary? Do you know? Well, they, they talk to people that have made it out of China or people that have relatives in China that have been able to share information with them. In the Internet age, in spite of the worst efforts of the Chinese government to stop information from circulating, some still gets out. So all of those things, I think, led to these conclusions. We know from the past that there were projections. We're not talking here about a couple of dozen incidents a year. Previous studies show that there, there may have been as many as 60 to 90,000 uh, of these killings taking place each year in, in which organs were harvested. So this is a level of, uh, of violations of human, human dignity and religious liberty that I think it's very hard for Americans to even comprehend. And this is ongoing because it's big business, isn't it? So what do we do to stop it? Well, uh, the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom will be uh, urging Congress and the, uh, the administration, the Trump administration, to, to act on these issues, to raise them in any kind of bilateral negotiations 
uh, with communist China, and we want to keep emphasizing that it is still communist China. Uh, I think of all these years of normalization of relations with China, we've tended to forget uh, what kind of a regime it is. It ends up that all this trade with China ended up changing us, I'm afraid, more than it changed China. But we do think there are things that our, our government can do, our Congress, the State Department, uh, the administration, and we will work with all branches of government uh, to help give them guidance on this in the hope that these issues will be raised with greater frequency and with more passion. And I know you and other commissioners uh, from the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom always say there has to be linkage uh, to religious freedom and trade with China. So, Gary Bauer, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your insights. Great to be with you this morning. Just to show how this is such a long-standing issue, that report is actually from July of 2019, and here we are still discussing it, and it just seems to get worse. Um, we have this from Anita. Hi, Simon Reagan. It's lovely to see you both again. Thanks so much for doing the extra hour yesterday morning. We really appreciate it. I remember hearing about organ harvesting in China some years ago. It's just shocking. There was an NBC News article online that said that allegations dated back to 2001, so it's been going on a long time. And as, as I indicated, Anita, I came across a story that was from the mid-90s. Um, allegations of forced organ harvesting first came to light in 2001 after a boom in transplant activity was registered in China with wait times becoming unusually short. The statement said and Chinese websites advertised hearts, lungs and kidneys for sale and available to book in advance, suggesting that victims were killed on demand, it added. It's hard to believe this is actually happening. They're detaining minority groups and harvesting organs now too, it appears. And uh, Simon, it, it goes back to just how they are putting these prisoners and their details on records that are available so that when perhaps it's someone who's well connected with the CCP, perhaps it's uh, a loyal party member or, or uh, someone who's fairly high on the social credit system, they can just look and say, oh, he needs a lung. Okay, well, how, how do we get it? This person here has a, a matching lung. They have what's needed out. Oh, he needs a heart. Let's, uh, this, this guy here, this Uyghur over here, he has a, a matching heart. And that's what it's appearing to, um, t to lead to. Um, we, we have um, this as well from Robert. Hi, Reagan and Simon. You might think China are bad, but 20 states in the U.S. have now agreed to liquefy their dead to be dumped in sewers and used as fertilizer to grow their food. I have actually seen that story. It is in incredibly uh, grim and indeed I want to be very clear that um, this is not trying to um, diminish the evils that are out of the West. Indeed the question we ask is, is the West complicit in China's human organ harvesting? And um, let, let me just go ahead if it's not been clear already. I think from uh, Simon's perspective and my perspective it's an unequivocal yes. We are complicit in China's human organ harvesting. Um, we've acted in national um, governmental ways without any element of conscience. We've not acted with a modicum of what is right and just in our relation to um, China and its heinous activities. We have uh, this from Ash. It seems you two get lumped with all the very serious topics. You guys do a great job. Just as I thought, uh, just thought, I wonder if the abortion laws going up to birth in the U.S. and even after birth will res result in a form of organ harvesting. I've seen footage on video from a hidden camera that some abortion clinics are already selling body parts and fetal kidneys sell for yeah, the most money. This is not what we're talking about here. We're, we're talking about um, a, a power now that's essentially become a world superpower. Yeah. This is what we're talking. We're talking about how we are seeing genocide take place uh, in China uh, and the regime is complicit in genocide and the world is silent. Uh, we're seeing, for example, that China is uh, attacking Taiwan, uh, hasn't actually launched any uh, um, 
any airstrikes on Taiwan, but is flying enough bombers and fighter jets over them to make the Taiwanese feel extremely nervous. They're the ones that are responsible for COVID-19 that has completely changed the world forever. Um, they are the ones that are setting up, as we did a program uh, earlier in the year, back in March, about how they are literally, with, I believe, building the infrastructure for the Antichrist with the mark of the beast, with their surveillance system, their technology, and systematically they're using this because they have no sense of any moral morality whatsoever. So anything goes when it comes to the uh, the Communist Party of China and its leadership. Uh, we, we see that they do horrendous experiments, uh, medical experiments, uh, and nothing is beyond the pale with these people. So there's a big difference between our Judeo-Christian West or what's left of it and this totalitarian dictatorship um, that is in China that controls and monitors its entire population. China is doing it all in the open. Of course. This is all in the open. And, and that's the difference. I, I sympathize with what viewers are, are saying in regard to um, the West actions. We still have enough shame about it that it's done under closed doors and has to be captured on hidden cameras. This is hiding in plain sight. Yeah, this absolutely, is stuff that's absolutely. open and no uh, one's doing anything. I mean, the, the, the most important report on this, um, if I can get my notes here, actually came out. It's the London Tribunal uh, that uh, produced a report back in July of 2019 on uh, forced organ harvesting on China. Uh, and he, here's, a chilling, here's a chilling thing. It says, already the uh, tribunal report details evidence that the Saudi Arabian government is paying for its citizens to travel to China where there is a pool of halal organs available on demand. These are fellow Muslims. Mm. Uh, and the complicity of Arab regimes of the Islamic Republic of Iran and others turning a blind eye to the persecution of fellow Muslims is an absolute outrage. Uh, and that's why as Christians we need to stand up as well as the persecution that Christians are facing in China as well. And I think it's a realisation that, that, that China is going to be a huge threat. Uh, an emerging threat and uh, we need to wake up to that reality. I mean, they tried to, through the British government, introduce Huawei um, five, to establish the 5G network here, which would have acted as an intelligence gathering information um, on every citizen in this country. Uh, and that's why they, they are promoting and using TikTok as a means to actually spy on people. And it's a spying device yeah. um, because they want to control everything. Uh, and this is the biggest threat that we face in the 21st century today is, is the threat of China. So earlier today, I um, had an, interviewed uh, Gary Lane from CBN uh, on his thoughts about the horrific uh, atrocities being carried out by the Chinese regime and also this barbaric and grotesque harvesting of human organs. We're now joined on Bind Headlines by uh, Gary Lane uh, from CBN. He also hosts a brilliant program called um, Global Lane. Uh, Gary, it's great that you can join us from uh, Virginia Beach in the United States today. It's such an honor to be with you again. Good to see you. And, um, Gary, can you share with this story that you've run on CBN on uh, the Global Lane, uh, the fact that it's believed that over 100,000 human organs have been harvested by the Chinese regime against uh, Chinese distance and uh, political prisoners. Um, what do you make of this uh, absolutely vile and grotesque story? Well, I know that it's, uh, it's been out there for some time. It's making the rounds again because it is a serious issue that has not been addressed. But two years ago, there was an independent uh, international uh, council that did a study on this. And, uh, and it was based in London, and, and their report was very thorough. They had spent years looking into it, interviewing dozens of witnesses, and they determined that, yes, organ transplant harvesting is going on uh, in China, as many as 100,000 cases uh, each year. Of course, China denies that, but this is alarming if they're uh, actually pulling organs of prisoners and other people uh, simply to make profit. 
Uh, and, and Gary, we, we know that the Chinese have the uh, most high tech surveillance uh, software of any country in the world. Um, how are they actually using their technology in, in order to harvest on demand these organs from living political prisoners and dissidents and uh, those that are in opposition to the regime uh, find themselves being murdered for, say, a lung or, 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 um, or any other kidneys or any other vital organs? Well, as you know, as you had mentioned, they have this database that is just extensive. And imagine they're, they're using it around the world as well. They're in 72 countries, uh, 1,800 surveillance points around the world where they're collecting data. And imagine what it, if they're doing that to the world, what are they doing to their own people? Now, That's reportedly, right. they're collecting information. They'll take a prisoner, uh, a Christian, a Uyghur, a uh, Falun Gong member, and, and they will just kidnap them basically, take them into the uh, hospital, and they start doing scans of their organs. Uh, in addition to that, they'll force them to give up their blood, they'll do blood work. And, and what they're doing is seeing if they're a match uh, with this organ transplant, the organ purchase, uh, they call it the kill, right, for hire. Uh, and, and they're doing that in, in, uh, in quite extensive numbers. Now, here, here's one reason that uh, people should believe these reports, okay? There, there are uh, revenues from these hospitals that are coming in, also transplants that are going on, uh, that we know are well beyond just the normal way of doing business. And, and the Chinese will say, oh, no, 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 we're only doing about 10,000, 20,000 at the most of these transplants from uh, prisoners who have been executed and uh, their, their organs are needed. Well, it's for profit. It's much beyond that. And if, if you don't believe this is happening, look, this is a country that forces women to have abortion. They're, they're forcing abortions on women. So it isn't that much of a stretch to uh, believe that this is actually happening where they're uh, taking out organs of prisoners and making money on them. And Gary, I suppose the, the big question comes to mind is where is the international condemnation on this? I mean, this is such a grotesque practice. You, you can even compare this to the uh, to the Soviet Union or that uh, of the Nazis. It's that horrific. So where is Biden condemning the Chinese regime? Where's Boris Johnson? Where's the European Union? Where is the West speaking up against this absolutely violent, evil practice that the Chinese regime is pursuing? Well, I don't think you're going to hear much from Joe Biden, because as you know, there are reports that his son has had business connections. Uh, Hunter Biden with the Chinese for years has made millions and millions of dollars. And uh, some of the, the laptop that was confiscated, some of those emails uh, said the big guy gets 10 percent off the top. So the big guy he was referring to was his father. So uh, it's questionable uh, the relationship that Joe Biden himself and his son have had with the Chinese. So. You're, you shouldn't expect much from the United States. In addition to that, uh, China is our top trading partner. And, and we make uh, about, we trade, I think the value of the trade between the US and China is uh, somewhere around half a trillion dollars a year. And worldwide, China's trade is close to 5 trillion, it, at least 5 trillion uh, prior to the pandemic. And so the world is dependent on China. We like the cheap Chinese goods. And uh, when you're doing business with China, you're making money on China, you're going to look the other way, or at least you're going to say, oh, sure, well, we'll accept what China uh, says about this. Uh, same thing with a pandemic. We just will accept what they say. There's no transparency at all. And I, I think one of the problems here is we, we hold them to a different standard, or at, at least we, sh we should look at their, uh, their practices, okay? They are Marxists, and Marxists don't believe in God. They're atheists, okay? So they don't go by the same set of rules that we do. They don't believe in Judeo-Christian ethics or values. So, uh, you know, it's whatever they want to do to make money. So if it means taking and removing organs uh, from prisoners uh, before they're even dead, uh, let's, let's do that. And uh, so they're very good capitalists, are they not? Yeah, sadly so. Um, um, Gary... There's a, there's a news report here that that's come out this week from a, a British newspaper that wrote about how China is executing uh, Chinese Muslim prisoners so they can harvest their organs uh, to treat dying 
coronavirus patients and saying that uh, this is being carried out on patients that and, and having lung transplant on um, some coronavirus patients that have only had days to live and so the big question has, has come up how have they managed to get and match the correct lungs to treat these COVID-19 um, victims have only got days to lay, live and clearly this is coming from using these uh, human donations that uh, the, the Chinese authorities are actually murdering in order to obtain them? Well, I think it goes back to your uh, question about the uh, data banks that they have, okay? If, if they are collecting, if they have all this information in storage, uh, let's say they take a prisoner in and they scan them for their organs and they also check their blood work, they've got a match. So they already have a data bank uh, and, and they have that information. So if someone comes into the hospital and, oh, they need a lung and here's their blood type, this, uh, do we have a donor that's a match? They can just go to their database and, and look in it and go, oh yes, hey, there's one in such and such a, a prison uh, in this location in China, uh, they're on death row, uh, we'll just execute them early and we'll pull their organs. I mean, it's, it's not that much of a reach to imagine how are they doing that? How would they be able to do that that quickly? I mean. Here in the United States, and I'm sure it's the same in the UK, if, if you put in for a kidney, for example, you need a kidney transplant, you can wait for months, if not years, uh, to get that. So how is this happening so quickly? It's because they collect the information, they know what they have and where it is and how to get it. And um, Gary, I mean, with your reports through uh, through Global Lane, uh, you you highlight the incredible persecution against Christians and against the Muslim community, the, the Uyghurs. Um, can you share with it the extent of the persecution that, that that the Christians are facing in China and the underground church? Because in recent years, it seems like the situation has got far worse than it was previously. Well, the Christians that we have heard from are saying that this reminds them of the cultural revolution under Mao Zedong, uh, that it's very similar, where uh, they're rounded up, they cannot practice their faith, they're thrown in prison if they don't comply. Uh, it's the cynicization uh, of Chinese society. Uh, Christians must comply, they must, uh, you know, they must give allegiance to uh, the Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party is supreme, and President Xi is, is the head of the party, and you must uh, pay allegiance to the party and to our president, our leader. And uh, they come first. So this, this whole God thing that you're doing, uh, you know, no, 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 let's put up uh, posters of President Xi in your churches. That's what they're doing, forcing churches to do that instead of putting up uh, posters praising God and Jesus. Uh, let's, you know, instead of those uh, starting your worship service with uh, what you call praise music, uh, let's start with the Chinese Communist Party National Anthem. Uh, that's what you need to be doing. And then if, if you're not uh, registered with the government, of course, the government wants to control all the churches there. The three self-patriotic churches are the government churches. Uh, any that are not registered, they'll crack down, and especially if they uh, grow in size beyond 50 or so. That's when they become very worried. Uh, but they're try it's complete control. It's complete control. Even an 18 year old, if you're, if you're 18, okay, then you can go to church, but any child under 18, uh, is not allowed to go to church. You, you're not allowed to be in a worship service if you're under 18, because they want you to grow up to be good communists. So, I mean, it's so extensive. There are pastors, uh, being taken away and, and put in prison, Church, uh, churches are raided if they're illegal. Uh, even three self churches they've come against lately. Uh, it's a big problem. And, and for the Uyghurs, I must say, uh, we as believers uh, must speak out when, when we see religious freedom violations going on. It's not just for us, it's also for them. So when we see Muslim Uyghurs being persecuted and rounded up, and as many as three million are in forced labor camps now uh, in China, we need to speak out. It is genocide. Absolutely. And uh, uh, also, we need to hear the voices of the Iranian regime, the Arab uh, Arab nations as well, speaking up to the no. plight of their fellow Muslims. But they're silent because they're closing up to this awful regime, which leads me on to my, my next question, which I think is a very important one. We know now that, that particularly through the COVID-19 pandemic, um, that this really that it came from uh, a lab in Wuhan and uh, the Chinese have uh, exploited this situation to push their kind of global agenda. We see that they're already 
on the verge of an invasion of Taiwan. They've just tested their uh, hypersonic uh, missiles that have uh, the capabilities of carrying a, a nuclear warhead. Uh, China is acting like an absolute menace right now. Um, so is the world going to wake up to the fact that China poses an existential threat to the West? Well, I think some people already are saying it's too late. They, they believe that by 2025, which is just four years from now, China will dominate. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I talked to cybersecurity analysts here in the U.S. who say that they're miles ahead now on, on cybersecurity and cyber warfare. As I had mentioned earlier, they have surveillance around the world. And then they have their Belt and Road Project, and they're making inroads in places like, gee, Afghanistan, right? The U.S. withdraws. Uh, the European powers uh, take their people out as well. And, and guess what? Who steps in? China. They're all ready to make a, a big buck on China and to gain dominance and influence over the Taliban, of all people. They don't care. You know, while they're throwing three million Uyghurs in prison, uh, they don't care uh, if they make deals with Muslims in, in Afghanistan. They'll do that. Maybe they'll help them, uh, you know, keep the, the Uyghurs down, although they have no influence over them. Uh, but yes, uh, you know, a lot of people say it's too late already. It's too late. Uh, and Gary, my final question, I mean, when we look at uh, Chinese society and what's happening in China with their mass surveillance system, with, with half a billion uh, spy cameras on, on people, they're living in a complete totalitarian state that, uh, and uh, living in a, a dystopian society that reminds me of the book 1984 by uh, George Orwell. Is there a great danger that this technology and the way that China's suppressing their own people could be exported to the West? Well, it's already being exported to the West. And just look at some of the decisions that our politicians are making. You wonder if they're, they're uh, good capitalists or even liberals or if they're communists. And, and many of them are, are adopting some of these strategies and some of these policies. And I, I think that the, the COVID pandemic ha has been the impetus for doing this. Uh, you know, they're adopting many of these strategies here in the United States and, and Canada is even worse. Look at what they're doing against churches. They're using the, the COVID-19 pandemic is an excuse to shut churches and close churches down. That's definitely, at least here in the United States, a violation of religious freedom rights. I think it's happened also there in the UK. It's like, well, wait a minute, whatever happened to the right to freely worship and express your faith uh, openly without having these type of restrictions? Uh, so that, that's just one example. And then we're, we're firing people who are in the United States who do not comply with a vaccine mandate. We're saying you must take the vaccine. And if you don't take the vaccine, goodbye, you've lost your job. I know a guy who's worked 35 years at the shipyard right here in uh, nearby in Virginia Beach, and he's worked there for 35 years. If he doesn't get the vaccine, he's out of a job. And uh, he has some health issues and concerns about, about taking the vaccine, the long-term effect on him, if his body's even going to accept it. And uh, he'll have to get it if he doesn't he'll be in the unemployment line. So real hardship. Now, it, it's not that much of a step to say, okay, today it's the vaccine, mandates over vaccine. Tomorrow, hmm, don't go to church. Don't go to church. Or, or if you, you know, voice these beliefs online, uh, you're going to lose your job. I mean, that's not that much of a stretch. So it's already the Chinese tactics already being, being put in place here in the United States and the UK and Western countries around the world. Uh, Gary, I just want to thank you so much for joining us on Behind the Headlines. You, you do a fantastic job uh, with uh, Global Lane. Uh, keep us informed of the key uh, geostrategic stories that are affecting the world and affect Christians. And uh, thank you so much for what you do. Glad to be here. Keep praying. We need to stay in prayer. Amen. God bless. Thank you. Well, really helpful uh, there from Simon and Gary. Thanks for that, Simon. Uh, we have some emails here. Jacqueline says, thank you so much for bringing this to our attention and talking about this. It's been on my heart for months. Nobody there to pray for these poor prisoners, but now we can get behind it together. I love your passion and outrage. I stand with you both. Do please uh, pray for the people of China and pray that there would be judgment on this reprehensible 
um, evil that's being perpetrated by the CCP. Um, this is from Glinda. I hadn't heard of Squid Games until my daughter mentioned how good the series is and is looking forward to the second season. Um, for goodness sake, how on earth is this being allowed on our TVs? If it's as bad as you say it is, I can't understand why people would watch the series. Thank you for keeping your eye on the ball. Well, Glinda, the, the thing is, um, culture often reflects what's going on in society. Dystopian novels, dystopian films, all of these things generally point to something that is already there in a seed formation or is already there in a full formation. So uh, granted they had amazing source material um, just with their next door neighbors um, in China. It is a South Korean program after all. Um, Kevin says, hi, uh, this is beyond madness that I'm seeing unfolding in this fallen world. I'm so glad I know the outcome of this evil unfolding in this planet. Knowing Jesus is the only reason I can carry on in this awful world system. I pray for those affected in this darkness and pray that they have Jesus in their lives. Hard to hear that man could fall this far down. Um, hell awaits the final destination of the Satan and his followers. Jesus have mercy is a hard prayer when we see these things happening. Thanks, Kev. I think you're both right. The utter hypocrisy of the West is disgusting and involved in China's organ harvesting the morality of the people behind the Great Reset who hold China in such high esteem. And indeed, um, that, that's our question. Are we culpable? Are we in some way to blame for um, for, for enabling China and for not cracking down on this. And I, I think we do have a lot of responsibility in this regard. We have uh, this from Margaret. Forcing people to worship the Communist Party reminds me of ancient Rome, forcing people to worship Caesar and not God. If there is an EMP strike, China could easily take over all Western countries. You can see where the mark of the beast is coming from. And one day they will have to stand before God. No one gets away with anything. Uh, Reagan, isn't it interesting, really, that I, I think you picked up on this uh, and, and some of our kind of very uh, intelligent viewers that have just emailed in that, that what we're seeing with the Communist Party of China is pure evil. Mm. And because of the moral bankruptcy of the West and because we've moved so far away from our Judeo-Christian heritage, we no longer know what evil is. Uh, we look back and say, look, the Nazis were evil. They carried out the Holocaust. Uh, Hitler tried to dominate and control all of Europe. That's evil because we can look back at that in history books. We've got films that portray this. We've got books that portray this. We've got documentaries that portray this. But we are very, uh, in the West, very, it takes us a long time to actually recognize evil when we see it today. And this is what's happening in China. It, this, is, this regime is evil, it's barbaric, it's grotesque. It's, it's hell-bent on world domination, and all of us are asleep. Uh, and considering that they will probably take over our entire kind of internet um, infrastructure, they, could, they are far more sophisticated, so it's only a couple of years, according to Gary Lane, that they could actually take out the West's infrastructure, uh, you know, internet infrastructure, our, our broadband capacities, everything, because they have through uh, cyber attacks because they're so much more advanced and they've stolen all the best Western technology and developed them themselves. Um, and you know, this is, this is the concern that with America now showing incredibly weak leadership in the world, who is actually going to stand up for, to China? Because when President Trump was in power, he realized that one of the most strategic important policies that he could actually carry out as president was to win the United States off China mm. and make the United States self-sufficient and not reliant upon China. Uh, and we see that really the Biden administration and Hunter Biden, his son, are so complicit with this regime that, you know, that they are really giving them everything they want on a plate, which is really handing over the West. And, uh, and so we're really talking about the existential threat that China poses to the West. Absolutely, Simon. Um, there's one story that um, stood out. Um, to, to us both, really. Jacob Levy, one of Israel's top heart transplant surgeons, was so shocked by all of this. It's been, it's been going on, as we've said, for years. Um, in 2005, when one of his patients was traveling to China for a new heart, which he had ordered two weeks in advance, 
he, um, so Jacob Levy then became a leading campaigner um, seeking to raise awareness about the organ trade. He, he's no doubt that the majority of the 712 transplant hospitals in China use organs from unethical sources such as prisoners held on religious grounds. He said that uh, Chinese physicians are not only involved in mass murder and crimes against humanity, but the international community and World Health Organization for some reason shut their eyes against these crimes. Um, we have to stand back and, and say, well, okay, the World Health Organization has uh, made a great deal of action in regard to COVID-19. They've even... They've been complicit yeah, they, yeah. with China on, on uh, covering up. they've been up. complicit in this, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, which, which makes you think, why is that the case? Is because mm -hmm. China is actually funding the, uh, the World uh, Health uh, organization um, and uh, if that's the case and they've penetrated and influenced them then they can't be objective uh, and I can see why President Trump decided to withdraw US funding uh, for who um, because they can't be trusted uh, and, and that's the great danger really because then they become complicit and then we don't hear the reports about what, what, what's actually going on there's no international inquiry about how COVID-19 happened how it was leaked or deliberately, uh, accidentally or deliberately leaked, we don't know, uh, from that uh, lab in Wuhan, which has mm. caused world devastation. It's caused hundreds of thousands of deaths around the world. It's caused uh, absolute economic devastation. We've all been affected by it, but no one's actually holding China to account. And, and that's why we have to be vocal as Christians, uh, not only on behalf of those who are Christians in China who face this threat, but in, in regard to the, the whole scope of it, uh, we believe that the gospel is powerful to transform and upend every situation. And so but believers have a responsibility to pray, not only for our brothers and sisters facing um, this sort of devastation, but also for the entirety of China itself. I've been to China. I love China as um, a, a nation. Um, in, its, um, in its beauty, its national beauty of, of culture, of food, of, um, you know, you can see a, a beautiful landscape throughout its art, but uh, in regards to its government, it is nothing short of satanic in its activities. No, I think, uh, I think that's a good analysis, and this is why we have to be vigilant, but we also need to pray for China. We need to pray particularly for the underground church of believers who are uh, suffering for their faith. But the good news is that the, the underground church in China is growing and it's becoming more and more powerful. So sooner or later, the, the regime is going to suffer. The, also, the interesting thing as well, that with all this going on, and maybe this explains why China is, is pushing world domination at this time so much, is because its, its population is dying. It's, it's a one-child policy. It is bringing China almost to its knees. Uh, and this could explain why China is acting in the way it is now, because they realize that time is short and they need to invade other nations to, to repopulate the Chinese population to keep the whole regime actually going. Otherwise, we see the collapse of, of communism in China. But it, it needs to be broken. It's a complete uh, totalitarian... Uh, mass surveillance, uh, high-tech digital control of its population, uh, straight out of George Orwell's book, 1984, mm. uh, which is a nightmare for the Chinese people, uh, needs to be broken. It, it indeed does, and the only, the only way it can be broken is with a mass awakening and r real r revival. And prayer and intercession. Uh, and, and prayer, and so that, that's why we have to be praying, we, that's why we have to be active in that endeavor. Um, so something else, uh, as we begin to draw the program to a close, Simon, in regard to this, uh, we can look at and agree that the West is complicit, the West is involved, in this, in an enabling, we have to keep our eyes open on talks that are being had uh, between the U.S. President Joe Biden and the uh, um, Chinese leadership, um, Xi Jinping. Um, we have to analyze what's going on in that regard. It looks as though relations are continuing to, af after during Donald Trump's presidency, um, 
having much more of a stronger line against China. Um, things are beginning to be warmer again. And that's, that's not a good thing because we have to recognize that we can't associate with and we can't um, have any part in enabling a system that is um, de dehumanizing, that is, um, it's committing genocide, as we've said, but um, one that perpetrates such evil actions against individuals on the basis of their language, on the basis of their ethnicity, on the basis of their religion. That goes completely against who we are. Well, um, it's been good to be here on Behind the Headlines with you, Simon, as always. Pleasure, Roger. Uh, please keep in prayer um, the people of China. Uh, keep in prayer this devastating situation. And join us next week as we uh, continue to go into the relevant news stories behind the headlines. Uh, have a good evening, and God bless each and every one of you.